Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb be praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, be to our God forever and ever, be to our God forever and ever. shall be strong in purpose and in unity, declaring aloud praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor and power and strength. Victor. 
my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Hey friends, thanks for being here today. Uh, just a quick heads up that at the end of this teaching time, we're going to transition into a time of guided prayer that I hope that you'll participate in. Uh, it'd be good to have a piece of paper for that and something to write with for that time. And so if you want to pause and go get those things, uh, you're going to need them here in just a little bit. Um, but I want to tell you this story. Several years ago, my wife and I had just been married for a short time when one day she came home from work and she had had one of those really terrible days at work. She started to talk about all the things that had happened with a co-worker and a uh, certain situation that she was describing. And my brain, instead of listening to her, my brain started coming up with all the solutions and all the ways to fix all the things that she was talking about. So I started interjecting my thoughts and my suggestions and my solutions. Hey, you should do this. You should tell this person that thing. And here's how you fix all the stuff that you're talking about. It didn't take long before she said those famous words. Stop trying to fix everything. I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to listen to me. Well, I'm a slow learner, but for the most part, over time, I got it. I learned what so many of you have learned, that sometimes what the people around us need from us is just to, for us to just listen while they talk to us about what's going on with them. Maybe you have someone in your life who you can go to and who you can just say what's on your heart. You can be honest and you know they're just, they're just gonna listen to you. Maybe it's a friend or a parent or a coworker or a spouse, but you talk and they listen. Maybe at the end of pouring your heart out to them and telling them all the things and saying all the words and you've done all the talking, you just say, oh, it's just so good talking to you. And maybe they haven't even said a single word but it's still good because you know that they care and you can just talk. Well, many times this is how we pray. We do all the talking and God just listens. We're in this teaching series called Echo, the gift of prayer. We talked last week about how God gave us the breath of life and how God speaks in the universe and even our own hearts and lives and voices echo back to God in response. When we pray, we're returning the breath God has given back to him in an echo. We're exploring four ways in this series that we can learn to pray. Talking at God, talking to God, listening to God, and being with God. Last week, we talked about talking at God. You know, when we find ourselves without the words to pray, so we pray words given to us by others. Today, we're going to be exploring what it's like for us to talk to God. Here's some good news. God knows you. God loves you. God even likes you. And God loves when you come in prayer to talk. God delights in you approaching him. God wants you to know that you can always come, that he will always listen, 
and that you're always welcome, that you can say anything and everything that's on your heart. And so I love these words from the Psalms that we're going to begin with today, these words that capture this idea of us bringing ourselves and our hearts and all that's going on with us to the table with God. It's from Psalm 86, verses 1 through 7, where it says, Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant. Lord, I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I'm in distress, I call to you because you answer me. To know that we can come to God with those words, knowing that not only does God hear us when we pray, but many times as we see in the stories from Scripture, God also acts in new ways in response to our prayers. And so we're invited to pray in this way, to bring it all to God. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Paul who is in prison as he writes this. He writes these words. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but for many of us. We're currently anxious about so many things. And so embracing the gift of prayer right now in our lives, it matters. This kind of prayer that we're talking about today is probably the most familiar to most people. Talking to God is beautiful in its simplicity. Praying our own words, pouring out our own thoughts. It's like sitting at a table with a trusted friend or catching up with a good friend over a cup of coffee. We simply tell God, all that's on our mind for as long as we want. We share our thoughts, our anxieties, our requests, and we give thanks. God is our trusted friend, our guide, the one we can bring everything to. It's interesting that God is the one who knows us the most, and God is the one who can best understand us. And yet for many of us, our speech toward God is the most censored and most qualified and most prefaced and most formal of any other conversation in our life. Sometimes it can seem like we're praying as if we expect God to be angry, that we aren't doing it right. Perhaps we imagine that God stands back, arms crossed, scowling, waiting to see if our words are acceptable. That's why I love how my friend Risa calls people to prayer with the reminder that God is near and God is smiling to meet you here. So we can speak however we choose, by talking aloud, by speaking through our imagination or by writing it out, through the beating of our chest or the shaking of our fists, or even through desperate tears. God doesn't care about how it happens. God's just overjoyed to be with us and he listens with no agenda except his deep and abiding love with us and his desire to see us have abundant life. And we know this about God because of Jesus. Jesus shows us that this is what God is like. Jesus gives us this understanding that God is benevolent and grace-filled and patient and also fierce in love. Jesus shows us that God has always been this way and always will be. Think about how people responded to Jesus. They came to him, to paraphrase what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, they came weary and burdened and he, he gave them rest. They took his yoke upon them and learned from him because he's gentle and humble in heart and they found rest 
for their souls because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Jesus is so, so good. And he shows us that God is the same. So when we pray, we're reaching right out in front of us to the one who holds all things in his hands and who is full of unquenchable love. Sometimes it's helpful to have a guide. Some of you may be thinking, okay, I want to talk to God, but what do I say? I mean, how does this work? I just don't feel like I'm very good at this. And so today I'd want to give you one practical method of how you can think through praying to God. You don't have to pray this way. There are infinite ways to pray. This isn't meant to be dogmatic or some kind of recipe. Uh, This isn't some Da Vinci Code secret to unlocking the secret to God's riches. It's just a simple guide that you're free to use or not. And it's called ACTS, A-C-T-S, which stands for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration begins this kind of prayer. Before we ask God for anything, or we thank God for anything, or we request God uh, do something, before we do any of that, we just recognize how amazing God is. We put God in God's rightful place. We recognize that God is both holy and good. God is both indescribable and wonderfully close. We dwell for a moment just on God's goodness, God's righteousness, God's faithfulness, and the depth of God's love and mercy. Next, this prayer moves to confession. As we consider the majesty of God's power and goodness, we also recognize how small we are. We see God's holiness. and We're reminded of our own brokenness. We're reminded, as Isaiah saw, when he saw a vision of God in the temple, he saw God's presence. He saw God's holiness and heard the angelic being saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And our response to that as we notice our own selves in contrast with God is, woe is me for I'm a person of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the king of glory. We're reminded as we've just thought about how good and great and magnificent and amazing God is. We're reminded that we so often fall short of that glory and of our own calling. And yet, we do not find in God a raging and angry tyrant. We don't find in God a disappointed parent. We know through Jesus that God is patient and forgiving. And so as the Hebrew writer says, we approach God's throne of grace with confidence. We speak truthfully about our own failures, our shortcomings, our sins, and our brokenness. We express our desperate need for God to mend us. We confess, knowing that this is the safest place to do so, knowing that God is the great physician who heals us. We confess, and God is there to receive and to love us through it. After we've told the truth, of our need for God. Our hearts are then drawn into a space of gratitude and thanksgiving. So we recognize all that God has done for us and His grace, His mercy, even the gift of Himself. Here we give thanks for all of God's good gifts, the greatest gift being His presence with us. And beyond, we recognize thousands upon ten thousands of blessings. We celebrate. And we choose to live in gratitude and deep joy, thanking God for his generous and open hand. And then after we've given thanks, now is the part of the prayer where we ask things of God. We enter into a time of supplication. Here we make requests of God for ourselves, for those we love, and even for our enemies, as Jesus taught us. One powerful way to do this is to pray with the newspaper or the news online. It's to look around us and to see the world as it is and then to ask God 
boldly to act toward its restoration. We pray for healing and wholeness. We pray for those in need. In doing this, we express our trust in God's ability to do more than we ask or imagine. We lean into the promise that the Spirit of God speaks on our behalf even when we don't have the words or the solutions. In a few moments, we're going to spend some time together here praying this way through this Acts model. And so you'll need that paper and pen. And maybe you want to go ahead and make four sections and make four uh, places on the page with the four categories. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. We'll do that together in a moment. Learning to pray this way can be helpful. It can be such a gift. It definitely has been in my life, and I still find myself often praying this way. Methods like this can be so helpful, but they're also meant to call us deeper. Imagine, imagine me talking to my wife through the Acts model. Imagine that that's how all of our interactions take place. Beth, I want to begin by telling you you're so lovely and wonderful. You're the greatest friend I could ever ask for. I do confess that this morning I was a little short with you while we were making breakfast. I'm sorry and that I'm not always the easiest person to live with. But I'm so thankful for our relationship and for all that you do for our family. Thanks for always being there for me. Beth, waiting patiently, then asks, what is it? They say, oh, well, well okay, um, could you add some toilet paper to the shopping list? We're almost out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, there's a level of familiarity and of relationship and intimacy and friendship that doesn't require me to go through that formula every time I talk to my wife. And it can be that way with God. Formulas and steps and aids and patterns can be helpful to us. And we should use them as often as we need and as often as we want. And there's nothing immature or shallow about that at all. But the goal is not just to say the right words or to discover the right or helpful formula. The goal is relationship. Words matter, but we can get so good at just saying the words that we don't fall in love with the one to whom the words are directed. So don't be good at prayer. Just talk to God. I remember getting my first bike. It was red. It was sitting out in front of the tree on Christmas morning. It was magic. And it had training wheels. Those training wheels helped keep me upright and prevented me from crashing so that I could discover the joy of riding that bike. Zoom forward about 20 years and I was on a trip with my friends in Colorado, and we were about to descend from a ride down from Cottonwood Pass in central Colorado, descending almost 4,200 feet from an elevation of 12,000 feet to just under 8,000 8, feet in just a handful of miles. There are several switchbacks at the top as you start the descent, but then there's this moment when the road straightens out, and it's on. Speed goes up. And you hold on for the ride. 30 miles per hour. 40. 45. I remember looking down at the speedometer on my handlebars and seeing my speed cross over 50 miles per hour. And that might not sound very fast compared to our cars, but on tires less than an inch thick on a bike that weighs about 17 pounds, with the air rushing past and around your body, it feels like you're flying. There's almost nothing like it in the world. And it all began on a Christmas morning with a little red bike with training wheels. God is in this place and in every place waiting to be discovered by you. And maybe it's true that your prayer begins with the train, training wheels of patterns or methods. But over time, those guides fade away 
Maybe we set them down. What you have then is just pure, raw conversation with the God who breathed out the universe. And it can feel like flying. To recognize what's happening in that moment. God and me. The breath he breathed into me, pouring back out to him in a sacred echo. And so may you fly, even if it means riding daily in prayer with training wheels. And may you continue to discover the joy and the gift of praying to our good God. Welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. As we enter this time, I invite you to draw near to God and to know the good news that through Jesus, God has already eagerly drawn near to you. You're encouraged at any time during this process to begin writing out your thoughts in prayer as you talk to God. The prayer card you've been given has the Acts prayer model available to guide you in this process. Look at the four categories and identify which one is most natural for how you typically pray. And then identify which one is most difficult or challenging or intimidating for you. Perhaps later you might want to go back and reflect on why that is the case and how you might embrace your strengths and grow in those areas that are a challenge to you. And now, Let's enter into these four movements of prayer as we talk to God. I'll be asking you some questions and giving you some prompts as we think about these things. We begin with adoration. We recognize that our words can't capture the magnificence of God, but that doesn't stop us from trying. So, as you write, what amazes you about God? What do you find breathtaking or beyond understanding? What has God made or done that gives you a sense of awe and wonder? How has God's goodness and love been evident to you recently? Take some time to praise and adore the one who gives us life. Next, we move to confession. God is good, but we are not yet fully who God has made us to be. Write down your confession to God, knowing that God is rich in mercy and grace. How have you experienced brokenness in your story? What are some ways in the past week that you have fallen short? How have your words or actions or inactions hurt others or yourself? Where are you resisting God's restoration process in you?
And now we move to Thanksgiving. God is the giver of all good things. What blessings can you identify in your life? What answers to prayer can you be thankful for? What are some small gifts you have been enjoying in these recent days? Who has God placed in your story that is life-giving for you? And finally is supplication. What are you asking God for in this season? What do you need? What do others need? Who needs God's hand of healing and protection? Where do you long to see God's kingdom become more evident? In the days to come, may you lean more deeply into prayer. May you talk to God about all that is on your heart. And may God do more than we can ask or imagine as we pray. God, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Blessed Jesus, come to me. Soothe my soul with rays of peace As I look to you alone Fill me with your love Mountains high or valleys low You will never let me go by your fountain let me drink, fill my thirsty soul. Glorious, marvelous, grace that rescued me. Touch your nail-scarred hands, Jesus, I will see. Glorious, marvelous grace that rescued me.